Hey there, VTV viewers. I'm Russell Skeet from Sun Country FM and High River. Just want to say we're having a great Vulcan 2018. You know what we've got coming up? We've got an excellent interview coming up with a young lady from North Carolina by way of Los Angeles and Star Trek heaven, Jennifer Gaddy. She's coming up with us right away here in Vulcan 2018. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. I'm glad to see you. Thank you. All off the back. Comfy chairs. Oh, yeah, well. You're special. Aww. Special people get comfy chairs. And it's um, not a red chair. So no, I'm more of a red chair. chair. I'm, You're doomed. I'm, uh, I'm doomed anyway. Wow. So, like I said, day three for you guys. How many people have all been here for three days? Wow. Oh, good crowd, good crowd. That's Hi, Jim, great. I see you back there. I'm waiting for you to show up. That's great. Oh boy. Have you had a good time? Yeah. Good, that's great. How about, how about you? Have you been having fun? I have been having fun. I feel a little guilty because I've gotten to do some sightseeing. Um, you know, I, uh, I've gotten the best of both worlds. I get to hang out with you guys, and then I have enough time to go, you know, visit uh, some of the sites of Alberta. Been to High River and... Woo! Woo! And Okotoks. Downtown. Woo! Okotoks. Oh, Okotoks. Yeah. Um, and then I, did, I did go into uh, Calgary yesterday for a while, and I figured, you know, I, I'm, I'm from a big city, so I thought, let me, oh, did I hear some booing? What was that? <laughs> Whoever's booing, just quiet down. Oh, okay. Well, I'm from a big city, and I don't, and I, I live in a smaller city now, so I thought, well, let me go see, let me go see the big city, one of the big cities here, so... Uh, Kind of looks like all the other big cities. <laughs> was, was, it big, was it big enough for you? It was actually. It was um, the the buildings are very tall, and there's yeah. and like most cities, there's a lot of construction and a lot of traffic. <laughs> well, we have two seasons here: winter and construction. Right. That's what I, I was saying. I said, I guess you have to get it all done before the snow comes in. Uh, so. pretty much. Yeah. It's pretty. If you had come a couple weeks earlier, you could have come for a stampede. Oh, I know. I saw. I, I was looking at the calendar, so yeah, I'm sorry. It's I a, it's, that. Well, that's okay. Yeah. Then you would have had yes. to stick around for. About and I managed weeks. to get lost too. I actually missed Calgary. I was on Deerfoot Trail and I thought oh I'm, this has got to take me into the city and all of a sudden I was heading to Edmonton so <laughs> it's like, I was like I said well the city it was there and then where did it go <laughs> yeah, so, if, you, if you hit the giant mall you've gone too see, far see I ended up in the mall and I oh, said, so go. actually that is probably the one of the biggest malls I've ever seen <laughs> I was, it's, it's a city it, that is a city so so yeah so oh, I, yeah. Did, I did I did I you know went around my elbow to get to my thumb you're gonna hear from the Edmonton guys oh, the Edmonton mall's big <laughs> yes, you have three gaps. Congratulations. In the same mall. You know what happens when you go to the West Edmonton Mall? You get to see what a full set of teeth looks like. Ooh. Ooh. You know that joke works for Saskatchewan. Well. <laughs> I love those. No riders. Oh, okay, get out. You, know, you, didn't, you didn't see the score from last night's game. Anyway. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Losers. Um... <laughs> We just got to get a little regional bashing in. That's just fun stuff. Uh, Jennifer, so obviously you've had a really good time. I know you, you, you were in for photo ops and, and some autographs on, on Friday. You had a chit chat with everybody. And yeah. Now, you said this was your very first con. Yes. Now, you, now I know you worked in soap operas when you were younger. Yes. Well, first of all, tell me a little bit about that. I've never actually met sure. a soap star oh, before. Really? Okay. Uh, you know, because I mean, you got to be like super beautiful to get on those. So for you, I can see it was not a problem. He's a charmer. Yeah, it's yeah. true. Well, it, no, you got to be pretty good looking to get on those yeah. things. So I'm thinking you're laughing there. But now, were you based out of New York or Los Angeles when you were doing it? Um, I did New York and then Los Angeles. So, uh, so very quickly, I born and raised in New York City, and um, I ended up getting into the TV and film business at a young age. Um, I was just a kid in public school doing musical theater in school and, you know, just sort of doing it for fun. And my music teacher introduced me to an agent. And so long story short, I started auditioning and I got my first, my very first acting job was a contract role on a soap opera that doesn't exist anymore called Search for Tomorrow. And, yeah. So, um, and I was about I was 14 and do you know the actress Olympia Dukakis have you heard of her she played my mother on that show it was her first she was a theater actress and she had done some film but that was her very first television show and so she played my mom so it was a really great way to start you know because she's she was just so wonderful and so you know it's funny soap operas this the, so my experience here at this first convention is somewhat reminiscent of my experience in the soap operas because folks that love their, their soap operas or their stories, used to be called my stories, are very, very dedicated 
and 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 have such knowledge of all the characters and all the storylines and very very detailed. And we would do personal appearances, much like this. And so this is sort of reminiscence of when I was a kid, and I would do personal appearances for that show. I did a show called Guiding Light. Um, uh, for a while, I did Young and the Restless in Los Angeles when I was a little bit older for a while. Um, and it is, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a dedicated group of fans that are very, very loyal to, to their show and their Very fans. much unlike Star Trek. Now. Yes, very much, yeah. Not at all like Yes, we are not dedicated at all. Yeah. We, we flip-flop all the time. I know, I know. Yeah, you guys are just so, you know, uncommitted. <laughs> well, that's the Federation. Right. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. So anyway, so so um, so so soap operas, you know, is sort of where I started, and and I did. It was really great to have this sort of loyal fan base, and uh, I did those for a while when I was a kid, and then I I went into uh, more nighttime television. It's when I moved to Los Angeles when I was about in my early twenties, and really got that's kind of when I started to do. Um, some of the uh, some of those features, Nemesis, which I know there's a picture out there of a, of a sci-fi feature I did. Yeah, you look Nemesis. pretty badass in that picture. Yeah, too. that that was a that was that was a, an amazing movie. That was one of the early films that I had done, and um, I had to work with an actual personal trainer. We all did for about eight weeks to get into a certain physical condition because I had to do a lot of running around in really high boots up on the side of a building that had been blown up and fallen over. And basically, my, m one of my parts of my audition was they actually took me to the location where all this blown up, burnt out stuff was to make sure that I had enough, that I was not fearful. I had to get up on t the side of this, up high on the roof and then the side of this building in these boots and prove to the director that I could run up and down carrying a gun and not be afraid. Which I have to say, I've never had an audition quite like that. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's impressive. So, yeah. Now, now, with the soap opera stuff, yeah. I mean, that's, that's rigorous. Yeah. Like, you've got to be able to learn your sides yeah. right away quick. You've yeah. got to be able to go, emote, yeah. all this kind of stuff. So, yeah. is it, would you say it's like really good training? You know, it, it's actually excellent training. Um, I, think, I think classical theater training probably prepares you the most to be able to handle all different types of, of situations. But what was great is the soap opera training, you do film an entire show in, in one day. And you get the script maybe a couple of days in advance. And you show up at seven o'clock in the morning and they block the show almost like a play. Because in soap operas it was multi-camera. So instead of it being a film camera and then they cut you know, they, in the editing room and they edit it together, what they do in a soap opera is it's almost like news cameras. So you've got three cameras that can slide and move around and they, they direct us and block us almost like a play on a proscenium stage and then they yell action and we do our entire scene and the director's in the control room telling the cameras which ones to go on and where to move. So it's kind of a dance between the actors and the cameras. And so it is great training because you have to learn a lot of lines very quickly. You have to be able to adapt to whatever changes are made. And yeah, we're shooting several pages a day. And it was interesting because every once in a while the soaps would get a film actor, you know, someone who was maybe well known in films to do maybe a, a guest spot character for a few episodes. And we always had the longest days when we had film actors because film actors were not used to having to know so many lines at one time. In a movie, you shoot maybe two, two pages at one time. So you could just learn little bits here and there. And they usually struggled the most because they couldn't ha handle four or five pages at one time. Um, so, so I felt it was great because when I moved on to other things, um, you know, I always felt that I, was, I had an easier time preparing for a role. You know, and you, you've got to be so careful with your, your diet and exercise and all these other things and, and making sure, because the camera's like right there on right. you. I mean, yeah. you're right there. So, yeah. you know, if you had a, a bad day and ate something you shouldn't yes. have and you got to zit somewhere. Yes. It, that thing's showing up no it matter what. It shows in your face. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, um, you know, it's, I really took it to heart. So when I got into the business, um, I had a, an acting teacher who, you know, he basically said, you know, your body is your instrument. And, 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 and you know, and, and this, is, this is what you have to work with. And I took it to heart and I interpreted it as I need to be in the best physical condition I can be. Um, not just with exercise per se, but, you know, what I eat, what I put into my body. Um, and, and so when I prepare for a role, I, I do, I have it. And you'll hear other actors do this, you know, we'll not eat bread 
or we'll cut down on caffeine or we won't drink alcohol, um, you know, and we'll drink a lot of water and you'll get a lot of sleep because it does all show on your face. So the, the world of the soap opera actor, your big star, is all deprivation. It's yes. Like well, yeah. You know, it's so funny because, uh, you know, part of me feels like as an actor, you should, you have no right to complain because, you know, it, I'm so grateful just to be able to work. And, you know, you, I'm in a business where just people spend all day making sure I'm comfortable. So, like, why would anybody want to complain about that? But, but in fact, what happens is, you know, you have you have the days where you're getting up at 4.30 in the morning and you're not really, you really want to eat that donut and you can't and, or you shouldn't and, and um, you really don't feel like exercising but you have to and you know, it's, it's almost embarrassing because it's like I have no right to complain but sometimes you're just like, oh, you know, maybe it would just be nice to have a job where I could just go home and eat a large bowl of pasta and drink a beer and and just sit down and not move. <laughs> you know, I, that sounds really good. We all need those things. Yeah. I don't care who we are. So, so now you, you move on from soap. So I guess during the time you're doing soap operas, you're, you're transitioning into other things as well. Did you find, like you said, you had to learn your lines very quickly, right. be prepared, be ready to go. Right. So you get onto a movie set or another television set where, like you said, they're only maybe right. doing two or three right. things in a day. That must have been fairly easy, I guess, for you at the time. Or was, or was it just different? It, you know, it's funny, it's, there's a saying that we get actors, we get paid to wait. And I really believe that because, you know, we'll act for free, but we, but we get paid to wait. And that's because one of the hardest things making a movie or doing a television show is the hours you sit around in your trailer waiting to work. And, and it sounds like, well, well, how can waiting be so difficult? And, it, you know, it, anyone that is fascinated with the film, with filmmaking, movie making, and then they go on a set, a lot of times they'll say to me, God, I'm so bored. You just, there's all this waiting and standing around and waiting for lighting. And it, and it is kind of true. So, so you're, so with the soap operas, it was, it was go, 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 go. And, and, and with movie making and, and television, um, you know, you have to get there early and you get your makeup on and they need you to be ready. Like you have to be ready when they call your name but you sit around a lot until it's time for you to be ready. And so you, and so you kind of have to learn to spend time sitting in a trailer um, because, you know, especially if, especially if you're a Klingon and you've got all this makeup on, you can't just, you can't just go on a stroll, you know, because everything will melt and, you know, and it's hot, you know, and, and, and then also, you know, you're in a costume, you can't maybe move around a lot. So you have to sort of be still. And so the discipline is actually learning to be patient and to wait and you know and that's kind of we get paid to wait having smartphones now i have to say the whole smartphone thing and be in the internet at least you can sit and, and read and play on your phone you know when i started we didn't have anything like that so i actually learned to sleep sitting up <laughs> like i developed this ability to not mess up my hair to kind of prop myself in a way where I could just sort of sleep without like tipping over or falling over <laughs> until they came to get me. Yeah, you don't want to be the, the one who, okay, Jennifer, come to right. set your hair's pressed against exactly, you. Exactly, exactly. Now they're going to wait another half hour while they poof you. Right, out right. So, so any, any worries about demands for bigger trailers or pulling the brown M&Ms out of your M&Ms or anything like that? Or you, you were, you were, I'm, I'm betting you were probably a, kind of a, uh, not a high maintenance. No, you know what? I'm, I, um, I, I yeah, I, I'm not a, uh, you know, I, I think it's like the codependent in me. I want everybody to be comfortable. So, you know, I'm not a, I'm pretty, I by nature am pretty easygoing. Sometimes I'm too easygoing. I think sometimes I get taken advantage of a little bit because, you know, I'm just, I'm, you know, I, I kind of go with, I kind of go with the flow. Um, but usually, and, and there are, there are a lot of actors. I mean, my Reka and Tucker, I think are perfect examples of just really great, you know, easygoing actors to, to hang out with and work with. Um, but I think what happens is um, the whole argument about, well, she has a trailer, I want a bigger trailer. That's actually not so much the actor per se, but it has to do with negotiations between agents. It, a lot of that has to do with the business. And so what happens is it's not that the actor demands the bigger trailer, it's more of a, of a negotiation tool. Well, you know, if if that act, the agent will be like, well, if that actor is going to get all of that, my actor has to be in the same status. And so, you know, I'm not going to let you think my actor is down here. It's, it's all a mental 
negotiation thing a lot of the time. Yeah, so it sounds like at the end of the day, the actor's just happy to have somewhere they can go privately for 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, a lot of them are like that. I mean, yes, you'll get, you'll get some that they just, you get used to it. Because, you know, you're sort of living in this fantasy world of where everybody is just taking care of you. And then I think what happens is sometimes they just, they, they, they take it to the next level like it's supposed to be like that 24-7. Yeah, <laughs> I have no doubt of that. So now, you talked about the ability to sit up. I know you talked, and sleep. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you talked about this uh, on Friday during the, the the, uh, the meet and greet. Um, talk a little bit about the makeup process because you had to get some serious yeah. prosthetics yeah. and you were you were there for I think a couple of weeks because you did yeah. a two-part episode yeah. so you were there for a little while and, and you had to get pretty used to the makeup. Yeah. Talk, just talk a little bit about the casting process sure. and all that you had to do in your head. Yeah it was, it, was a, it, was, it was an amazing process so uh, t a week or two even before I started shooting um, I think I had mentioned it I had mentioned it in the meet and greet um, they so you have the prosthetic you know, you have the forehead, and I had prosthetics on my nose, and I had a mouthpiece, and then I had a wig, and then the costume is also very specific, so they had to do a, a mold of my entire head, which was, you know, kind of scary and claustrophobic. There's that moment where they cover you in that goo, and they stick your head into something, and you have to try to not breathe for a period of time, and we had to do that. Um, and that's sort of how they were able to make it. And then they had to do the mouthpiece. And then I had to meet the wig maker to, to do the wig. Um, and, uh, and then once they had all the pieces together and they had the costume all set, I do have to say one thing about the costumes. I, I was going to talk about this meet, meet and greet. There is something they do. They call it the Star Trek bra. The, the, the wardrobe, <laughs> the Star Trek bra. And it's just sort of amazing. Like, it's this, like, amazing... I mean, for women, it's it's this amazing bra where it just it just sort of lifts you and you stand straight and and it, I don't know it's it kind of like it it, it made my back I, I was I had like perfect posture for like I never had such great posture in my life so they even have to you know and and you know I was like wow look at this <laughs> yeah. so so you know it's like I was walking around feeling pretty good about myself for a while. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, that's all the preparation. So the, the, but the makeup portion of it when we're actually shooting is, um, it was two hours of sitting in the chair to get the makeup on and it was an hour and a half to get it off. Um, because they can't destroy the, the prosthetic pieces. They want to save it. And so they're certain, they can't just take alcohol. Alcohol will eat away at the rubber. Um, Michael Dorn w had, was telling me just, um, all the different, you know, he was a little bit of the guinea pig of trying to figure out how they could not waste so many pieces. Because, you know, he goes in and they, you know, they has, has to do his makeup. And so they really had it down to a science when I came along. Um, but they have to be very careful. They use peanut oil and how they can get everything off. So it was a very, very long process. It was very, very long hours. Um, and then also, once I had the makeup on, um, the, there was, pa they called it Pax Paint. And you know, it, it, it tightened your face, so you didn't feel like you could really move your mouth too much. And um, I was telling James, um, I had really, really long hours, and uh, about the fourth or fifth day, I got up in the morning to get up to go to work, and I got out of my bed, and I stood up, and I just, I, I blacked out, and I passed out, and I woke up on the floor. And um, I made it to work, and I was just falling asleep in the chair. And they eventually had to take me to the to the doctor on the studio because I couldn't figure out why I couldn't sleep. And basically, I wasn't eating because I was in such a constrictive um, outfit and makeup for so many days, working so many hours that I just really wasn't eating properly. And uh, the doctor was like, "You just you know go eat a go eat a big." bowl of pasta or something and <laughs> get your energy back. Wow, well, that's not good. No, no, no. It was, it was, uh, it was, yeah, it, it, it was a good lesson learned of uh, trying to take care of yourself, you know, because I just, you know, I didn't want to mess up anything and we were working really long hours and I don't know, I just, in the smell of the paint, I just, I didn't have an appetite, so... I got over that. I started I'm just inhaling food after they told me that. Wow, I can imagine. Okay, yeah. well, that's good. But yeah. Now, talk a little bit about uh, coming on to the set. I mean, you're coming on to the set. Uh, you, you really were with only one of the regulars, and that was Michael Dorn, if I yes. remember correctly. Yes. Um, but again, you're, you know, you're going to be around, and there's going right. to be a lot of the, the right. original of the cast and mm -hmm. a lot of the crew that's always there around. How do they treat the guest stars when they came on the show? You know, um, so I've had, I've had a lot of experience um, working on different television shows, and so I've gotten the sense of uh, what you expect. You know, when you, when you go on a television show that's been established, you know, the regulars, they're like, fam they're like family to each other. 
Um, and I now, you know, Baal was a was a big character, so I was around for you know for at least two three weeks. Um, but still, I always feel like when I'm coming in, I'm sort of you know I'm someone that's going to be there for a little while, and then you know I, I, I go away. So I don't in, I don't expect the actors to just embrace me and make me family. You know, I figured it'll be a professional relationship and I'll do my work and we'll go on. And in some TV shows, that's what it's like. You know, they're really courteous and they're nice and we work and, you know, that's it. But then you occasionally have certain shows where they just embrace you and they're happy that you're there and they're really into it. And, and the Star Trek cast was very much, you know, that type of cast. Um, I got to... Uh, stroll around and see some of the other sets, uh, the bridge and things like that. And Jonathan Frakes showed up and he was around and he, I mean, he was just, he was like, hey, I mean, like, like I was his new best friend. He's like, hey, how are you? And, you know, gave me a hug and, you know, everybody really liked the Klingon, you know, makeup and it was just, it was great. So he was wonderful. Patrick Stewart, same thing, you know, I mean, oh my God, it's Patrick Stewart. And he just came up and and, uh, and I mentioned the meet and greet, you know, he was appropriately flirty. And, <laughs> and it was like, I, you know, it was really kind of cool. So, so yeah, so the, even the actors I didn't work with, you know, because then you have lunch, you know, it's like time for lunch. And some of the actors eat in their trailer, but some of them actually go and they eat, you know, with the crew and everything like that. So I did get to, I did get to meet um, a lot of the others. And then, of course, I mean, all my scenes were with Michael Dorn, and I, I just, I can't say enough, enough th nice things about him. So I feel very fortunate. I, I, I was a fan of the show to begin with, and then to get to work on a show that you're a fan of, you know, it's a double-edged sword because what if you love the show and you go and everybody's a jerk? You know, it just, it's just heartbreaking. But I went on that show and I just had the best time. Well, that's a great, because she said the same thing. She said she, when she got cast on Discovery, she said, oh my God, I'm on Discovery. You know, she was yeah, part yeah. of Star Trek. Do you, yeah. you kind of looking at that now as, you know, I, I know it was only a couple of a couple of guest shots, really, but right. at the end of the day, I mean, you can look back and say, yeah, I was on Star Trek. Yeah, you know, it's it's really funny. I, I, um, I, I was so excited about it, but I guess, you know, it, as an actor, it's like, you you do your you you do your job and then you kind of have to think about your next job, and um, and I didn't I mean I knew how much it would mean to me but I didn't realize how much it would resonate with other people so like even to this day I'll you know I'll I'll meet someone or I'll make a new friend or something and they you know they don't know my whole life yet and then they find out I was on Star Trek and they're just like <gasps> you know and it's so cool so and I watched bit I watched Birthright again you know, because I knew I was coming here for the first time, it had been a while, and I was like, wow, and, and then I watched Non Sequitur and Voyager, I'm like, these really hold up. And, and it does, I'm like, I said, yeah, I am part of this, this is really, really cool. So, um, no, I just, I'm just, it, yeah, it's, it's a really surreal thing to be a part of, you know, it, I, I almost don't believe it, you know. Well, one of the things <laughs> on Birthright that I thought was cool was, um, uh, Michael Doran has never been here yet, but we're holding on oh. home. Uh, but Alan Scarf came yeah. here oh, really? a few years ago. And he's one of my favorite actors. He's been on Star Trek a few times. I've seen him in a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, he actually played a character, a, a real person that I know. So I thought that was interesting. But he was great. He played your dad in that. I, I just, I love him. Like the yeah. way his delivery is, the way you talk, like even when you're talking to him as a person, yeah. he, he's just got these intense looks and he has almost like Kirkisms in a way. Yes. He, every word is its own sentence yes. kind of with with him and just get, tell me a little bit about working with alan because i think he's a great guy yeah no he you know he was very um he was just this very sort of dry low-key dry sense of humor that that's kind of was my impression of him and uh and i i i was we used to bug him because i i always felt like he wasn't saying my name correctly <laughs> Like, you know, I was like, my name's Baal, and he'd be like, Baal. <laughs> you know, and I'd be like, and I'm like, you're not saying my name, you know, so it was kind of this whole thing, because I remember he had that, um, it's that one shot where, uh, uh, you know, he's going to execute Worf, and, you know, and slowly everybody stands up to say, well, if you're going to kill him, you're going to have to kill me too, and then finally, you know, I walk away, and I stand in front of Worf, and he just looks at he just looks at me and he goes, oh. <laughs> you know. And I remember, you know, he 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 would he was a bit of a cut up, and so we were just sort of joking about. It. He was also joking about the fact that you know, um, 
his Klingon looking daughter, you know, he's kind of giving me a hard time about that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Well, he is a Romulan. Yeah, but right. he played the good Romulan because yeah. they're supposed to be kind of superior ish yeah. and, you know, standoffish yeah. and so forth. And he just had that look of epic superiority about him, which, and when you meet Alan, he's not really like that, right. but he kind of projects it still. So yeah. for him, it, it actually it was good casting. Yeah, him. no, and, and he, you know, it, it is sort of that. I actually ended up um, really getting closer. And again, it makes sense with the characters with Christine Rose, um, you know, who played my mother. And uh, in fact, uh, Christine was the one holding me up from not fainting during the big master shot during that. Because when, when I was like in my, like, I'm starving to death and I think I'm going to pass out, um, the master shot is basically you have all these extras, you have all these people, and they have to do the big shot to sort of establish the, um, the, exe you know, the execution scene, and they have to run the lines. and. I, st I, had, I was next to her and I said to her, I said, um, I said, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with me. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. I, I don't wanna tell anybody, can you just hold me up <laughs> so I don't like collapse during the shot. I didn't wanna ruin the shot. And so she's looking and she's like, oh, and so I just have this memory of her, you know, holding on to me, trying to keep me from not tipping over. And it kind of works because it just looks like I'm really sad. And, oh my God, they're gonna kill Worf. And really, I'm just like, oh my God, I don't wanna faint. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, such is the magic of television. Yeah, exactly. So you finish working on, on Next Generation and you, you go on with your life and go to do other things and then a few years later another show starts up called Voyager and all of a sudden your phone's ringing again. Yeah. Hey, you want to come back? Yeah. Well, and actually there's, there's, a, there's a, a story in between that. Um, so I actually got called to audition for the part of uh, Kess. Uh, Jennifer Lee, Jennifer Lee's Ooh. role, and so and so I was up for the part of Kess, and I probably so what's really amazing about the Star Trek folks is even though they know you and they know your work, they're very particular about they don't just say here I want you to play this part they really want you to audition they really need to bring you back they really need to kind of figure out what they need you know who's going to fit, and. Um, I mean, the idea of being a series regular on a Star Trek show, I was just dying. I was like, oh my God, like this, this is going to be the best thing ever. And I had gone back to read for them like several times. And so, it, so the, I made it to the final callback, which is basically, they call it network. It's when you go to network. And um, it's not just for the Star Trek folks, but then it was the UPN network. It, it's the network people. And you basically have to go into a room, and I'd done this before, you have to go into a room with all the corporate people and do your audition and hope that they pick you. And it was between me and, and Jennifer. And, um, and I will honestly say this, I blew my audition. I was so, I wanted it so badly, and I was so nervous that, it's not that I messed up my lines or anything, but I just, I went in and I, and I you know, they want consistency. I didn't do what I'd been doing every audition. I think I just, I just kind of, I just let my nerves get to me. And I'd been doing this for a long time. And it's hard when you want something really bad. Sometimes it works against you. And I just wanted it too much. And I just, I just kind of blew my audition. And obviously Jennifer went in and she, she, you know, maybe she, she didn't let the nerves get to her and she, and she got it. And, uh, and, and I was really like, I was so heartbroken because I wanted it so badly, but she was great. I mean, you know, she, I, she was great. So, um, so I was really disappointed in that because I knew I was the one who blew it. But then what I was really happy is, is they did call me. So I didn't blow it in the sense that, oh my God, I'm never gonna work for them again. Um, I got to actually um, come back as Libby. So I thought that was a good consolation prize. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, you know, as you know, like Cass got written out of the show after yeah. about three yeah. seasons, they brought in Seven of Nine. Right. So it makes me wonder if you had got the part if that would have happened. I would like to think that no. <laughs> well, not, not when you have the Star Trek bra. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> That's a secret weapon I, right there. I like to think that oh, they still made a terrible mistake. <laughs> no, I don't know. But yeah, so the phone did ring. You got to come back and do Libby, and of course that was with uh, Gary Wong. Yes. Uh, he's no stranger to Vulcan. He's yeah. been here several times. Oh really? He? Oh yeah. He's a nice well, he, guy. He, he, he doesn't live nice too far guy. away. He lives in Calgary. Does he really? He does. He splits his time between Calgary and Las Vegas. He's got a, his girlfriend lives in Calgary. I had no idea. Wow. Yeah. So we see we see a lot of Garrett. Wow. Okay. So you're sick of Garrett. Well, no. tell, yeah, tell Garrett I said hey. 
I was going to say, Libby, Libby said hey. Yeah. Said, hey Actually, yeah. my, I have a, a friend of mine. Um, I now live in a, a city called Asheville, North Carolina. Um, I left the big city of L.A. Of LA a few years ago and decided um, I wanted to actually like not sit in traffic for three hours and I wanted to have look at trees and have some land so I moved to the mountains of North Carolina and uh, I have friends there who went to Dragon Con in Atlanta Georgia and I guess he was there and Michael Dorn and he and so my friend got up the, the nerve to run up and ask them about me and and I was really excited to hear that they both remembered me and had really wonderful things to say so that was great yeah, yeah no Garrett we, like I said Garrett's yeah. been here at least what four or five times? Four or five. Oh my goodness, really? Okay, yeah, wow. Yeah, no, he's a he's a friend of Ulcon. There's all no right. doubt about it. Yeah, all no. right. we see a lot of Garrett. He's a great guy. So, yeah. but tell me a little bit about going back. So you go back. You're on the show. You're you're Libby. You're kind of an alternate universe yeah. fiance slash girlfriend. Yeah. So my first thing was, you know. Oh, I don't get to wear makeup. <laughs> I don't get to be. Oh, I don't get, get to be a Klingon. Um, I'm a human. God, how boring. <laughs> but then I thought, well, I guess my hours will be a lot shorter. I said, well, this will be good. I won't work. Not that I didn't like. I mean, I, you know, I was working like 15 hours, and which was great. But after a while, I was like, wow, I'm really tired. Um, so I thought, well, okay, as a human, it probably won't be. 15 hours and and uh, no it was still it was still a really 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 long days um, and again because they're very specific you know it was really great to see how specific they are uh, David David Livingston his David's first name was our director for that and he was a producer on the of the show so he was very specific and um, and everything and I I um, I really it was really nice from that perspective it was kind of nice to do the show um, to just be uh, just sort of this ingenue girl who, what I thought was great is like, wow, I'm, I'm Ensign Kim's fiance. So I thought like, this is, this is a really interesting idea where, you know, to just wake up and be home and the idea of like, I'm not supposed to be home, but I'm really glad I'm home. And, and, um, and then, uh, and then, you know, to, and I, I said this in the, in the meet and greet, it was kind of a similar arc to Bayel, where, you know, Bayel is in, is in love with somebody who doesn't really belong there, but cares for her, doesn't really belong there, and he may have to leave, and it was the same thing, you know, there's the man that she loves, and they're together, but he says he doesn't belong there, and, you know, so it was sort of an interesting, interesting parallel between the two characters. You just could not find love on Star Trek. Could not, but not I did, lasting love anyway. No, I did get to kiss everybody though. So uh, I, got, I got the Klingon kiss, and then you know I got to kiss Garrett. So how bad? Could so it's not all bad. That's right. That's good. So what what is new? What's going on? What's what's next for you? What's happening in your world? Um. So well, the most the, the most recent thing that's been airing is there's a television series on HBO um, called Vice Principals. I don't. Do you guys get HBO? Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, Danny McBride. Do you know the actor Danny McBride? Oh yeah. He Eastbound and Down. He had the series, and then he did Pineapple Express and Tropical Thunder. Um, he wrote a, a television series about um, vice principal vice principals in a high school. So it's basically a, a, an inappropriate show about high school teachers, and um, and Walton Goggins plays the other vice principal. And I play, and so um, I did two seasons of that. I'm just in a little bit in the first season, and then they brought me back for a lot of the second season. So that's airing now. And um, I'm actually going to go off, and I'm doing a, this, this little, just a little short film that I'm hopefully will do a lot in festivals. Um, there's a, a screenwriter who lives in my town who um, is kind of making a name for herself in horror, which I have never done horror before. And so she asked me, she um, asked if I would um, star in her little horror short. And I've looked at some of her work and she's quite good. And so I don't have to be, the, I'm not a monster and I don't get killed, but um, I get to be kind of the mom, you know, in the, in the little horror short. So that's the most, that, like literally I'm shooting that probably, I come, I come home and I start shooting that next week. So that's my most recent thing. So I like to do little projects sometimes um, instead of the, you know, the big things are great, but every once in a while I think you need to try to support some of the smaller projects. So that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, and, and, and work is work at this yeah. point, too. Oh, yeah. You know, it's always that. You know, like you said, you always got to be on the hustle looking yes, for something new, right? Yes, that's true. Um, 
we were talking with Rachel a lot, obviously, about uh, Discovery. I don't know, have you had a chance to see it? Just kind of get your two cents there? No, you know what? So, uh, so, so in order for me to watch Discovery, I have to pay for something called CBS Access. <laughs> And um, they don't give it to you free after being on Star Trek. No, you think I would do that, and not that not that Star Trek doesn't deserve it. But um, you know, it's hard when when I'm used to getting things on CBS for free, and now I have to pay for it. I'm just sort of like, huh. but now that I have met Reka, and also you know, I was a fan of Reka from Battlestar Galactica. Oh, yeah. I was really, really excited when I was like, oh my god. I, so, so I think we all were too. Yeah. From Discovery because she's brand new from right, that, but right. also. BSG. I mean, if you don't like BSG and you're a sci-fi, well, exactly. you so, have problems. So now I'm gonna. Now I'm like, you know, I'm I'm just gonna have to suck it up and pay for CBS apps access so I can well, watch. What, all is, what is it in the states? Like five bucks? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's not. Well, I don't think it, it can't be more. It's not that much. It'll probably be under ten. It's like Netflix, right? Like right. Bucks, It'll be like Netflix, bucks. and it's not that I'm again. It's just that you know I've got like Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime, and then and then we still pay for cable. You know, so. Um, I was just being cheap. <laughs> I, was like, I, was, I, was, I was being a little yes. cheap, but but I'm gonna I'm, for her. I'm gonna suck it up and yeah. Pay here for in Canada, it. we get it on the, uh, the, the the Space Channel, so so you yeah. don't pay for it. Well, we do oh. with the cable. Oh, but it's on your cable. Yeah, it's on our cable. Yeah, so. yeah. Because so, we cannot get CBS yeah. uh, all access up here. Right. Okay. So they won't allow it in Canada. Could CRTC rules? Okay. Uh, well, okay. Federal broadcast. Okay. 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 Yeah. No. I um. I feel. I feel a little lost in in in. Uh, I did see the. Uh, I did see the. Uh, pr pr you know the previews and stuff for Discovery, and it just it looked awesome. So. Well, we were actually we were just out uh, with Brandon on the the Truck FM. Uh, thing he was talking and doing about the uh, mm -hmm. uh, Discovery Season 2 trailer, we were kind of breaking it down, so. Oh, yeah? It's, it's again, we're a lot of Discovery folks, you know, we've talked about it, big Discovery fans. Are you big Discovery fans? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, well, then, you guys are going to watch it, too. So and, and again, fun. you know, with all the new Star Trek yeah. coming out, and new movies, and J.J. And Abrams stuff, right. I know that's a mixed reaction for some folks, but it's Star Trek, so it's all good, so there's right. lots of it out right, there. Right, so right. I guess given the opportunity now that, you know, the folks in Star Trek know who you are, you've been there a couple of times, you yeah. know, they, if they come knocking oh, on oh, your door. Oh my God, absolutely. I mean, I I mean, I mean, even, I read for Enterprise. Um, I, again, I was like, oh, I get another chance, and, and I, I didn't get as far with, with Enterprise. I mean, there, I'm always, I was always, I'm always in their mind, um, but now I feel like it's a new crop of people doing it, so... Um, it's time to sort of shake the tree a little bit and I say, mean, hey, I'm here. But you know, but enough time has passed. People are yeah. going to go, oh, okay, I kind of remember. And then, then, but then they're moving on right. because you're, right. you're a new character in the show. So. Right, right, right. And with so much new track coming out, I mean, there's going to be opportunity. Right. So hopefully you get your, your foot in the door with that one. Yeah, I hope so. You know, it, as an actor, you kind of go where the, where the work is. And, um, you know, in between the Star Trek shows, you know, I've done, you know, I did ER and, NCI and someone had mentioned Navy NCIS and JAG and I just I did Nashville recently and um, you know and these and I don't know what shows th those shows what if what's popular here. Oh, well, we get them all. Yeah, so um, so I've been fortunate to have a quite a, a eclectic resume, but um, but you know you have your favorites and and I'm always you know I'm I'm I'd love to do more I'd love to do more Star Trek I'd love to do more sci-fi in general. Um, it's just you know it's just it's it's really luck of the draw. They have to, they have to. It, it, you kind of have to be right. Like I feel, like Bayel, like that was the part that was meant for me. And I think like Libby, like that was the part that was meant. For, you just it's like that was meant for you. And so you just have to sort of wait around until that other part that's just right for you comes along. Fair so. enough. Well, I know during the meet and greet you talked about you you wanted to. Uh, had to take time to watch some Canadian TV. Yes. Have you noticed it's a lot of American TV? Well, yeah. So yeah. So that's the thing. I, I so my TV finally started working, and basically I get Canadian news. Like I can get the local news, which is good because I like to kind of know what's going around. But yeah, I, you know, you had um, live with Kelly and um, Ryan, and I'm like. Why do you have live with Kelly and Ryan? Well, we have our own morning news shows as okay. well. Okay. Oh, and I did. I watched S Summer with Marilyn. Or Marilyn oh, and okay. Marilyn yeah, in the yeah. Summer That's or something right, like that. Sure. <laughs> if you really want to watch Canadian TV, I think Heartland. Heartland. Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's a few so, others. So Heart, so that, so I actually... The, the Beachcombers. The I went, Beachcombers. so I went to High River. Corner well, down. I'm staying in High River. Woo I went to downtown High River to, because um, sometimes I go to a cute little downtown, and, and my brother and I said, oh, we'll you walk went to around. Maggie's? 
Yes, and and and, I live and, River, so and, and and fortunately, somebody told me before I went there that it's actually not a real diner. No, it used to be. It used to be a Western <laughs> store. You used to be able to go there and buy boots and hats. Oh, okay. Well, what? So this is. So as an actor, this is what I what I absolutely loved is um, to to actually see that there's a working, living town that actually functions as a movie set. To me, is just so awesome. So we first, so when my brother and I, my brother's here hanging out with me, we um, went to the museum. And that's where I kind of got my first knowledge. Like, I'm like, all of these movies were shot here? Like, I had no idea. And I never really, I didn't know Heartland. And I'm just reading all about Heartland, and now I can't wait to see Heartland, and just, but just all the different cowboy movies that were shot here, and then, um, my brother knew who Hoot Gibson was, and, and, and it was just, you know, it was really great. And I ate in Evelyn's, which was a, which was... Good for you. Yeah, it was yeah. delicious. Good for you. And then, um, and then they were telling me the museum, she says, no, you have to go, and there are these storefronts, and they look like storefronts, but they're not real. And then the real stores are in between, and I'm like, oh, I gotta go see this. So we went over, and we looked at Maggie's Diner. I got, I took all kinds of pictures. And then I love, there's like a little store between Maggie's Diner and the... The travel, the travel. Um, the Hudson Travel Store. Store, and in between is the real store that has to put a sign out to tell everybody, "Come on in, we're a real store." And I just, <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally, that's their sign. Come one, on in, we're a real store. One side of Third Avenue in High River is movie sets, and people. It's I, unbelievable. Like, again, I live there, so whenever I go walking up and down, there's always 20 tourists out there. Yeah. And I gotta stop for half an hour, and I take all their pictures in front of right. Maggie's and all these places because it gets a ton of people wanting to come see it. Oh and my like, God. Like, like last week is a good example. They had both. Uh, Tin Star, which is a BBC production, right, right, right. And, and they had Heartland shooting at the exact same time, one block apart. Wow. That's, yeah. I mean, that's just unbelievable. They, they got all the trailers out there, trucks, and they block off half of downtown. And it's funny because the locals get a little run around. I'm it, sure. But, but for the most part, I just go and sit and watch it. James yeah. has been down there a few times. Yeah. You no, I know you said doing, doing extra work and stuff too, right? That's fantastic. And you can do it all in the same day. That I know. That's incredible. And um, and there were there were all kinds of tourists from all over Canada, actually, and I guess all over the world, even just that day, taking pictures and coming up to me says, "Aren't you so excited?" Because they were they were just like you. They figured I was a Heartland fan, a Heartland fan. I said, "Well, actually, I just learned about this. I'm I'm a fan, and I've never even seen it just because of the enthusiasm. It's incredible." Well, hopefully, then you'll get cats in one of these shows there and you you'll go. get to come back and hang out some more and, and we'll get to spend some more time. I hope so. I got to, I did shoot, uh, I was in Van, I was telling them like my last time in, in any part of Canada, I was 20 years ago in Vancouver, uh, there was a series called Viper. Yeah. Right, because I think they shot some of it in Calgary but they would shoot some of it in Vancouver and I actually, I did like a really awesome episode of Viper um, playing a, actually two people a, a, a famous actress elizabeth gantry and then the girl that looks just like her and um and that was it and i spent like 10 to almost two weeks in vancouver and you know i mean I, i've been telling so i've been like uh texting my friends and, and i'm very very serious about this that canadians really truly you are the nicest people on the planet yeah. and i know that they say that's a stereotype but it, it's it's not it's just so every random person that i run into from people who are serving food to people walking down the street to to like the homeless guy on the street was even polite so i'm walking down the street and there's a guy and he's sitting there and he, you know, he looks like a homeless guy and i'm walking down the street and he goes, hey, you dropped your glasses. I turned around and there's no glasses on the street. And he's like, ha, 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 I caught you. I, he's like, I fooled you, I fooled you. And I laughed and then he went to me and he says, oh, I hope I didn't make you mad. Like, you know, like he was even apologi he was apologizing for his own joke. And I, was, I said, that is, that is being, that is true Canadian behavior. Like, like he's apologizing to me for his own, for his, it was hysterical. So I, you, it's just, you just, a, it's a lovely country and you guys are wonderful and I'm just having please, the best please time. Please tell your president that. He's calling us oh. a security yeah. risk right now, so. Let, can I, can I, well, yes. I, have, yes. I, I have to, I have to be careful what I say because I, you know, I don't want to. Not here. But, but, um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. We're sorry. <laughs> As good Canadians usually are. Yes, yes, yes. Oh. Well, Jennifer, I tell you, our, our time has come to an end, but uh, it's been an absolute pleasure oh. having you here. We you really so enjoyed uh, enjoyed your time. You've got uh, photos yet today I do, and I autographs. Do. Absolutely, so I hope you all chance, stay. A chance to go in and have uh, more of a chit chat yeah. if, if you'd like. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, go in and, and talk. As you can tell, I'm, I'm not shy. <laughs> 
Yeah, no. And, and I don't have much to say. And so. she likes Canadians. And you know, I love Canadians. I even, I, I had pizza last night. Even your pizza is good. You got really good pizza here. Our pizza's the best. <laughs> you should try our Chinese food. It's really good too. Is it? Okay. Yeah. That, anyway. might, that might be my, my food tonight. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta have that. You gotta have a double-double before you leave. Wow. You gotta go to Tim's and have a double-double. Okay. I went to, I had an egg, I had an egg biscuit. Okay. Even your fast food. My brother and I, we bought like, I bought like a, an egg biscuit and some hash browns at Tim Horton's and we're in the car eating it. And I was like, is it just me? But does this even taste <laughs> than the fast food in the US? There's, it just doesn't taste processed. Yeah. It just tastes, everything just doesn't taste as processed or as, I don't know, I'm like, this is crazy. It's made with real moose. Oh, okay. <laughs> 100% moose. Yeah. Everybody, Jennifer Gaddy, thank you very much. Thank you very much.